All right. Um, you know the cool thing about uh, having a coworker that's also presenting. Uh, it's and without coordinating on what we're presenting, is there's opportunities for a lot of the same code to be presented. Uh, but it'll be fine. And the other amazing thing, by the way, I just so you know, I attended a stand-up meeting less than two hours ago where Chris was saying he hadn't figured out how to get the microphone working in mobile devices. So way to go, Chris. Uh, this is a pleasant surprise. All right. So this is uh, part three of trying to do this demo. Um, today, what we're going to show you is a web part that is using Azure OpenAI uh, and Assistance API to actually give you a uh, chatbot that can do some pretty cool stuff. So let's do a demo. Whoop, there you go. All right, so this is my little web part uh, assistant. And uh, you can see here that I what I did is I made it available uh, for you to put in the API keys in the configuration. Now, I really don't like doing that in production, by the way. I would, I would normally not put API keys Hard coded or anything like that, or are available through a through a property. I would probably use a to tenant storage or a key vault or something fun like that. But for the purpose of demo, uh, we are doing this. All right, and we don't need to say my password. And so this is my assistant, and I can say, um, you know, what do you know about mockingbirds? I think Mockingbirds is two words. And you'll notice it's actually pretty quick. Uh, it's a lot quicker than the experience you have when you're uh, when you're not using streaming. And that's because what it does is as soon as it figures out the first word that it's going to respond to you, uh, it doesn't actually know what the next word is going to be. It just sends the first word, and then it uses probability to figure out what the next word is going to be. And so that allows us to uh, to have an experience that is very responsive and very, uh, very fast. Now, the other cool thing about using the Assistant API is that I can continue conversations. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Um, uh, what color are they? Um, now, it knows that I'm referring to the previous conversation. We'll see. <laughs> Of course, now, because I just talked about how fast it was, it's going to be slow for me, but uh, we'll see what happens. No worries. Come on. There you go. And by the way, my uh, my assistant is a, called a smart assistant. Uh, so it, you may uh, notice it's a little sassy when it responds back, uh, and that's fine. But the other thing that we've added, and that's the code that Chris just demonstrated, is the ability to um, to use voice. And I'll just do the same demonstration here, just to show that I'm just as cool as Chris. Are there other species of animal that are mockingbirds? Doesn't really make sense, but so there you go, right? And the other thing that I can do, hopefully I shared my audio, is I can get it to read automatically for me. Hey, can you uh, name some cool bird names for mockingbird thingies? And like Chris, I didn't prepare my prompts. <laughs> so there you go. Those are cool names, right? Sure. Here comes the musical troupe of the bird world. One, Northern Mockingbird. Asterisk Mimus Polyglottos Asterisk, the classic rock right. star of the group. I'll refresh the page. Two. Because I have not implemented the stop speaking button. Now there's another thing that, and I've demonstrated this before, but there's another thing that we didn't get to talk about, is the concept that this is just a base assistant. Um, there's something else I can do with these assistant. I can actually extend the functionality by adding functions. Uh, and I can also extend with logic apps. So I can write a cool logic app in Azure, and I can get it to call it, or I can just write some JavaScript function uh, and tell it that it needs to call it. And this is where I'm going to say, 
Hey, what's the weather like in Barrie, Ontario? So there you go, right? It went live to get the weather. Now, if you're not aware or you're not familiar with what large language models uh, are doing, they're not up to date on anything, right? Most, uh, I mean, the language model that I'm using now stopped understanding about the world in 2023. That's when they took a snapshot of all the data they wanted it to train it, and it doesn't know about anything that's happening. So if I asked it, you know, who won the Super Bowl or who won the Olympics, it would not know about that. That's where you can use um, an, an approach which is called grounding and uh, RAG patterns, which is Retrieval Augmented Generation, I think. I'm horrible with acronyms. What I'm able to do is I'm able to say, hey, I know you don't know about the weather right now. I know you don't know about searching the internet or what's happening on the internet right now, but I'll give you a function that allows you to call the weather. And I'll give you a function that allows you to search the internet. Um, and you could also, you know, since we're in SharePoint, you could also say, hey, why don't you go search my documents and give me information about my document, right? The possibilities here are endless. And uh, when I'm not going to have time to show you the code part that, that does the extension of this, but when you look at the sample, you'll see that I've made it so that you can plug in any function that you want to call. And it's super easy to do so. But now let's switch back to the presentation. And I don't see comments. So if uh, if anybody's got comments, uh, Chris uh, or Dave, feel free to interrupt me. All right. So uh, again, this is based on the Azure OpenAI Assistance. And Azure OpenAI Assistance is based on these four entities, Assistance, Threads, Messages, and Runs. We've presented about assistance in a previous call. It's basically the configuration or the personality of your assistant. Uh, so all the tools, all the resources, all the body of knowledge that you want your assistant to use is configured with the assistant. Now let's talk about threads. Threads are basically a way to keep your context about your conversation. So it's got an ID, it's got some messages in it, and it's got some metadata. One thing, you can't list threads in a in an assistant because that's just a security thing, right? It may be security through obscurity, but it's still the idea is I shouldn't be able to go find another person's conversation. I have to have my thread ID for my own conversation, and someone else can have their own conversation. It's going to have its own thread ID. How do I create a thread in the code? All I do is I've got this function that's called create thread. I know I'm being very original in my naming convention. And what I do is I grab the open API endpoint. Remember, this is something I have in my configuration screen. And it's always the base, right? So it's Azure, OpenAI, blah, blah, blah. And then I just add OpenAI slash threads. And I give it the API version that I want. The API version is stored as a constant in my code. Um, maybe I should make it a configurable thing, but it doesn't update that often. And then, like every good uh, JSON post body, I tell it the content type that I want to send, and I give it the API key. And then I say stringify the message that I want to send, right? Well, actually, in this case, there's no message. This is just a thread. So what I could do, though, is I could actually send additional information. I create a new thread. I could start a thread with a message in it, or I could give additional instructions or things like that. And then what I do is I just post a message. And again, a post method is usually to create things. So this is going to, even though I'm going to slash uh, OpenAI slash threads, it's actually creating a thread with the information I've sent. Now, once I've created the thread, I can give it messages. And messages are the individual things that are going back and forth. So again, I always use the thread ID that I just created, and I pass it a role. I can say this is coming from the user, or the assistant usually will send me a message back that says, hey, this is coming from the assistant. 
And then each message will have some content. It may have some file and it uh, some files in it, and it may have some metadata. And I did not demonstrate attaching file in in the, this example, but uh, maybe another demo will do that. All right. So to create a message, guess what? It's the exact same approach, except the URL here is I go to the thread that I just created. So I go threads slash thread ID slash messages. Again, like usual, I pass the JSON and everything, but then all I need to do is I say, I'm the user. I'm sending you this message that the user has just typed, and I hit post. So user, message, and then post it. Now, the messages can have different structures, right? The most, the simplest one is uh, here, role and uh, content, but the content in this case is always going to be text. Now, there are some cool things that are coming up, and it may or may not be enabled on your on your tenant, depending on how lucky you are. But you can actually send content, uh, an array of content. So can you look at this image and describe it to me, right? Uh, so you could send some text, and you say, this is text, and this is my question. But you could also send it an image with a image URL, and then you just pass it the URL that you want it to be able to access. Now, it needs to be able to access the URL because it's not authenticating on your behalf or anything like that, so it needs to be a publicly accessible URL. If you want to pass a, a, an image that is not publicly accessible, you can, um, you can actually just send a file, or you could use a base64 uh, encoding image. So we're going to skip that, but basically I send it the file, I give it a file that I've uploaded, and I pass it the file ID, and boom. Now, I've created a thread, I've added messages to it. How do I send it to my assistant? I create a run. And a run is basically saying, go nuts. Go with all the information we've discussed so far uh, since the previous run, or since we started. And it's going to have a thread ID, an assistant ID, a model, uh, instructions, tools, and metadata. So this is how I create a run. Uh, I just pass it uh, because so far my run has not been associated to the assistant. Uh, so this is how I tell it this is the identity or the personality I want you to use. And this is really poorly documented. Shame on you, Microsoft, but you can actually send the message as a streaming message. All you need to do is to say stream equals true. It's added somewhere in, as a footnote in the message, in, in the documentation, um, but this is how you do that. And then I'll use a Postman kind of event here to show you what happens when you send behind the scenes. This is what's happening it's sending you a whole bunch of tiny little messages on a single connection that you're able to react to and that's it how you're able to create a really really cool and animated conversation now when you get the message body uh, in individual parts you're going to get something called message deltas and message deltas basically will have each word one by one so sure comma here's blah, 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 right? It's going to just send me the whole conversation, usually on a word by word basis. All right, I'm running out of time, but I'm going to show you one thing. Every single colleague that I've showed this thing um, has reacted the same way. They're like, yeah, this is really cool. But most importantly, how did you get the cursor to work, right? Uh, it's really silly. It's almost embarrassing. So let's take a look. I say, write a story about an animated cursor named Blinky. Uh, I'm going to send it, and now it's starting to message. You see there's a little cursor. I slowed it down to 10% speed here. Uh, I wish I had the sound effect to show that it slowed down. If we go up 1%, you'll see that the, blink, the Blinky cursor is actually animated. It's actually changing color as it's going through. It happens really quickly. Um, and again, we're not trying to, oh, and there's a warrior horse here and there for some reason. Uh, but how I did this is embarrassingly simple. And it's also how ChatGPT does it. Uh, I just have my CSS, 
And in my CSS, I basically say, look, anything that is streaming. So when I start streaming, I set the class of my op my my div tag to be streaming. And I say any paragraph, any unordered list item, any ordered list item that is the last thing in that div after the last thing. So after the last paragraph, after the last bullet, insert this content. And because I'm lazy, I just kind of use a, a character that shows a round circle. And then I put all the padding and all that stuff and the, 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 the theming. But this is the key here is I'm actually saying use an animation called blink. And I say do it infinitely and do it at a rate of 0 0.9 seconds. Now, the animation is also in my CSS. And all the animation is doing is it's saying I'm going to go from uh, one percent of past, uh, one like fully opaque. I'm going to go halfway to partially opaque, and I'm going to go back to fully opaque again. And that's what this is doing here. Now, the one thing we have to be really careful about when we do any sort of animation is that animation um, can cause accessibility issues. There are some people, and even some people on this call, who might even get motion sick if uh, there's too much animation on a screen. So one trick when you create your CSS is to just add a media query. You don't have to write any code uh, as long as you don't consider CSS code. In your, in your CSS, you just say add media, prefers reduced motion, and uh, the value is reduce. Then you just change the animation. In this case, I tell it don't animate. You could do an animation if it's just not a repeated animation. That's usually fine. Um, but that's really how we do this. Now, the rest of this presentation was really about showing you how to uh, do the voice and the transcription. But we already got a really cool version of this. So I will skip straight to the end. All right, so this is my web part. Uh, it's going to be available in the SPFX web part repository. For more information, you can go to these URLs right here.